today we're going to look at how children's toys reflect adult values. Now to do this we're going to be looking at context at certain times in history as well as the children's toys that were popular and we're going to see how many links we can make. So as always the first thing you need to do is pause this video, do yourself a date, title and starter which today is thinking about have your parents ever stopped you from playing a particular game, watching a particular film, you've been back at a certain time, and why? So pause the video, date title task. We'll jump straight into looking at medieval life. Now we've gone through this several times, uh, but just to make sure we are all on the same page, we'll do it again. If you look at the picture on the left, you will remember that most people in the medieval era are farmers. That is most people's job. Most people are poor in the medieval era, uh, they often only live in houses with one room like you can see on the right and the animals would live inside with them. They probably have uh, sheep or cows for milk uh, and chickens for eggs, things like that. And if you remember 20 to 30 percent of people lived on the edge of starvation. And of course, you've got the picture at the bottom, which refers to the fact that there are frequent outbreaks of plague in the medieval era. Now, life expectancy is quite low, roughly 40 to 45, uh, much lower if you're poorer and slightly higher if you are richer. As we know, toys for medieval children often relied on imagination and things that are lying around because they're a bit cheaper. You've got things like stick dolls are really popular, particularly with the poor. And knuckle bones, if you remember we've played this, it's where you get a knuckle bone of a pig and you throw it in the air and you have to pick up as many other knuckles from the floor as you can and then catch that first knuckle on the back of your hand. Other popular games for the rich were board games like chess. Uh, so yes, chess is that old. We've also got imagination games like tag. And babies would be given rattles and what they were made of obviously depended on your class. So pictured here is made of wicker, which is like bendy sticks. And they'd put something inside and then weave it round so it couldn't fall out and the baby choke on it. If you're a bit richer, you might have rattles made of coral uh, or other precious metals like silver for a baby. So you're going to want to do yourself a subheading and then just bullet point those five games for me, please. So pause the video, subtitle, bullet point those five games. We've also got to think about the purpose of these toys. Again, Medieval children aren't like you guys. Their childhood in the medieval era is really quite short. Uh, they're expected to work basically as soon as they can walk. They don't have a lot of free time. So a lot of their toys are based on their future roles. So you've got stick dolls to prepare for motherhood and knuckle bones to help with coordination. Tag for your stamina and just general health. We're also going to look at the Industrial Revolution. So the Industrial Revolution is a period in the 1800s. Uh, we're going to look at that in a few weeks time. But it's a massive change in how England is. Uh, so if you look at the picture on the top left, the Industrial Revolution is when all the factories come about in England and people move away from the lush countryside to these horrible back-to-back -back houses. If you can see the source in the middle, there's no privacy, no space, no garden, uh, no inside toilet sometimes. Uh, each of those houses will be shared between two or three other families. Really crowded, leads to lots of disease. And obviously combined with all the pollution from the factories, it led to a lot of problems like asthma where people can't breathe. 
you look at the top right hand corner, you'll see a picture of a Victorian school. Uh, so it's very much children are seen and not heard. You copy from the board. You don't do anything else. You're not allowed to talk. Uh, there's punishment. So you'll be beaten if you don't follow the rules. Bottom right hand picture shows children working in those massive factories. Uh, purely because their fingers are so small, they can get in all those fiddly machines and clean them out. Now, you can imagine how dangerous this is. Uh, there are stories of children having their arms torn off, uh, being strangled by their apron strings. Really, really quite horrific. And of course, the other massive change for children's toys and games is the printing press. Now, we're quite used to just being able to print something that uh, happens instantly. But in the Industrial Revolution era, it was brand new technology. And it meant you could actually have proper books for the first time. In terms of toys in the Industrial Revolution, there is a massive split between rich and poor. Again, because there's a massive split in like society. So rich girls would play with porcelain or china dolls. Um, I say play very loosely. They're very fragile. They're easy to break. So you've got to be careful when you play with them. Rich boys would play with train sets. And again, because we've got all of the uh, Industrial Revolution focus on metal, a lot of these are made of metal for the first time. You've also got tea sets that were used to practice high society manners and etiquette. We also see kind of a weird shift towards uh, educational toys with the start up of school. Uh, it's not yet completely compulsory, but most kids would go to school for a significant amount of time. So you get alphabet blocks, which I'm sure you guys have seen before. And with lots of paper being used it leads to uh, other paper games like paper windmills which you fold and then you blow and they rotate uh, and also one of my favorite things is a thaumatrope so it's so easy you get two circles of paper you glue them back to back and you've got a different image on each side and then when you spin it those two separate images become one it's pretty interesting if you uh, if you're a bit bored uh, feel free to pause this video and go and just Google how to make a thaumatrope. It's quite interesting. I've got a few that kids have made me over time. And when we're thinking about purpose, again, they're training kids on their future jobs. So by giving girls porcelain dolls, you're training them to be mothers. And giving them tea sets, you're training them in how to behave properly. With train sets, you're teaching young boys about the mechanical process because they may well be owning factories or working in them. But again, it's still focused on things that are easy to obtain because you've got stuff made out of paper. So pause this video, do yourself a subheading and get down those six toys, please. Now we're going to look at the modern era. So this is what you'll be most familiar with. Nowadays, we've got a massive focus on STEM subjects. So science, technology, uh, engineering and maths. So all the sciencey stuff, really pushing that with our government and in our school society. You've also got the fact that school is now completely compulsory. Uh, you must attend all the time. You've got huge changes in technology. So you guys, I'm sure, are probably accessing this lesson on a laptop, tablet, phone. Um, we've got overhead projectors. We've got cinemas. We've got Internet. We've got apps like there's loads of stuff nowadays that affects children's toys. But on the negative side of that, you've got some issues with cyber security, Internet security. You can have Internet bullying. You can have grooming, uh, you can have catfishing. All of those are negative aspects of technology that impact children. And at particular times in human history, particularly after World War II, so roughly in the 
uh, late 1940s, 50s and 60s, you have complete fear of nuclear war and nuclear weapons will destroy an entire area in an instant. Like They are very, very advanced weapons. You, know, you guys are used to doing fire drills. People in the 60s and 70s had nuclear bomb drills. So you can count yourself lucky we don't have to deal with that. Which leads us nicely on to looking at the modern, uh, the modern toys that children enjoyed. So you've got Dan Dare, who is uh, a very old comic now, but it's all about the space race. Do you think in the 50s and 60s where America and Russia are racing to land on the moon? Uh, Dan Dare was this really cool uh, new astronaut character, uh, so he was popular at the time. You've also got Muffin the Mule. Uh, not going to lie, Muffin scares me. Uh, she is the stuff of nightmares. If you YouTube uh, Muffin the Mule, just, just do it. And I would like you to pay particular attention to her mouth, because you can't unsee muffin but she was very very popular led to all sorts of merchandise like t-shirts and lunch boxes so not my cup of tea but was very popular at the time we've also got one of the first ever computer games known as pong and it's basically ping pong so you see those two white paddles at the side of that black screen so it's a two-player game and all you do is move your paddle up and down to hit the ball back and forward. Yeah, again, probably not our cup of tea, but revolutionary at the time. We've got more computer games nowadays, uh, particularly Grand Theft Auto, which leads to lots of uh, arguments against violence and uh, things like that. And of course, nowadays we have all sorts of portable consoles. We have PS4s, uh, the Game Boy, which is pictured here. You can do everything on your phones nowadays. And this is where we start to see the purpose kind of shift away from education, although that is still a thing, uh, but to more about entertainment and getting kids better at technology, getting them reading, getting them interested in key events. So pause this video, do yourself a subtitle and get down those five toys. So then, in summary, children's toys show us what adults expect of them at the time. So there's toys that help them gain skills for work in the medieval era. So adults expected children to work, so toys reflect that. There are quiet, independent toys for children in the Victorian age when kids should be seen and not heard. So adults wanted children to be quiet, so their toys therefore are quiet. Toys are also moving towards education rather than just occupying time, particularly in the Victorian era. And it all links to things that move because that's what adults like. Adults like factories, adults worked in the factories. So it makes sense that the children's toys reflect that. And in the modern era, we now get games based on desirable skills like coding and mechanics. So adults nowadays want children to go into high paying jobs. So that's what our society focuses children's toys on. So again, please, can you pause the video and get down those five points? OK, your task now is to apply this principle, this idea that kids' toys reflect the era they're made in. So kids' toys reflect what adults want. Now, the way to do this is to think about the biggest issue the world is facing now. Are there any injustices, any prejudices? You've got the Black Lives Matter. That's a huge issue across the world. Global warming is a huge issue as well. Uh, the temperature of the planet's rising and that's causing massive habitat loss. 
you know, there's a lack of doctors, so people aren't necessarily getting the care they need. Littering is even a problem. You, know, you go outside now, there's litter everywhere. So you need to think about the biggest issue in the world. Once you've got your biggest issue, you now need to think about a children's toy. So maybe it's going to give kids the skills they need. Maybe it's going to make them aware of things, make them change things, it's going to inspire them. If you want to look at global warming, I had um, a student last year do uh, a game where you had to like save a polar bear from the ice. If you do littering, you could maybe do uh, something to do with bins. If you want to do injustice, you could maybe do like a Monopoly version where people go around and you have to make the coolest sign or something like that. But your game must reflect your biggest issue. And then please share your ideas in the chat. This is how we will be doing our register and proving you're here. If you don't do this, we're going to assume you did not attend this lesson. So pop your ideas in the chat, um, or if you're stuck, we might be able to come up with some help for you. I put some ideas for games on the board. You've got things like Monopoly. Uh, you could even do computer games like Mario Kart uh, or like action games like Mousetrap. So you can be computer games as well. That's fine. And if you really feel like a challenge or you're thinking about doing history next year, try doing a game from another era. It's not a modern era. You could think about the danger of nuclear weapons after World War II, uh, how to spot a witch in medieval times, uh, how to cure the plague, anything you can think of, really. So this is your time now just to spend five or ten minutes thinking of your game and pop it in the chat box. And then finally, as always, there is a show my homework quiz on show my homework. You need to complete it three times or until you get 100%. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Bye.